Ding, 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 attention. Um, Diaper Don, that's his new name, is doing a town hall. Uh, a town hall in Diaper Don's world is where he turns up, uh, all the sheep and crazies uh, salute, bow down, make noises, woo, 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 etc., etc. And he's given a very easy ride. But he's literally just basically allowed to sit there and say whatever he likes. Uh, and Laura Ingraham, I mean, let's face it, you could put a whole load of toilet rolls in front of a former guy and they'd probably give him a more harder time, uh, ask more relevant questions and attempt to at least hold him to some element of Here's a person that wants your vote, wants to be prospective leader. But obviously with uh, Ingraham, who is, I'm not sure what Laura Ingraham's qualification is, aside from being a buffoon. But she has a microphone, she has a camera, and she is there to make sure that anybody who is watching Fox News, addicted to watch views, <laughs> I can't even say it, uh, gets their just dessert, their just whack of... <laughs> S-H-I-T. And now let's play. Laura Ingram, greeted by hers and Lumpy's followers. Yeah, I think we're just going to have to bring back the, the spinning machines, because... That's what's happening. The washing cycle is on. It's a new category. I don't know if you've heard this, but I came up with this one. Migrant crime. There's crime, there's violent crime, there's migrant crime. We have a new category of crime. It's called migrant crime. And it's going to be worse than any other form of crime. You look at New York. They're emptying out their prisons into what's our What's the country. first thing you will do if you become president again? On the border. I know well, that's going to be your first there act. There are two things I'm going to do. Number one is drill, baby, drill. And the other thing, equal. equal. How are you going to make sure that mail-in ballots and voter fraud, which we heard from a lot of people in line, was an issue front and center? They're very concerned about mail-in voting. So forget the past. What are you going to do to make sure we don't have problems going forward? If you have mail-in voting, you automatically have fraud. If you have Okay, well, there's mail-in voting in Florida, that's and right. you won huge. That's right. If you have it, you're going to have fraud. But you want. Because you don't have any... When you go into a voting place, like you go into one in a, in a properly run state, they look at you, they give you give voter ID, you give all sorts of identification. I mean, it would be very hard to cheat in a mass scale. When you Time and again, Republicans show they're a party of chaos and disunion. This is not your father's Republican Party. They shout about a problem, but then do nothing to solve the problem. The bottom line is Republicans have to decide, who do they serve? This is not, not hyperbole. Who do they serve? Donald Trump or the American people? How will you put up that kind of money because you have a bond to put up? Even if, if you appeal, you've got to put up escrow money. That's uh, uh, it's a lot it of, is lot a of dough. It's a form of Navalny. It is. But it's happening in our country, too. Uh, we are turning into a communist country in many ways. And if you look at it, I'm the leading candidate. I got indicted. I never heard of being indicted before. I was going. I got indicted four times. I have eight or nine trials, all because of the fact that I'm. And you know this, all because of the fact that I'm in politics. They indicted me on things that are so ridiculous. Uh, Fanny in Atlanta. All, all we'll get into people. that. We're going to get into that in a moment. But do you? The money. No, I got everything. I become an expert at law. If and Mr. President, twenty thousand Chinese have entered since October. Yep. Okay, this is, uh, does this concern you more than other immigrant groups? Uh, probably it would because it's China and it would be very hard to cheat in a mask. I think there's a lot of pressure on the court system of New York to do what's right. You borrow a small amount of money by comparison, you pay it back, the bank is in love with you. And by the way, this is a time, and a lot of the audience says no, Banks are doing very badly with commercial loans. They're not getting their money back. They're in default, everything. This was a perfect loan. I did a favor to this bank. I borrowed money. I paid it back. It was already done. Just one second. I listen to it. I pay it back. And then this guy uses this. They come. It was just a weapon. They come after me, and they charge me many times the money that you're talking about. $355 million fine 
for a perfect loan. Where the bank was happy, the insurance companies, everybody's happy. And even he, in his statement, he said Trump did nothing wrong. He said he didn't have any contrition. Why didn't he just hand him over when they were requested, though? I mean, they requested him. You could have just handed him over. It probably I was saved yourself a lot of trouble. First of all, I didn't have to hand him over. But second of all, I would have done that. We were talking, and then all of a sudden, they raided Mar-a-Lago. Do you remember? They said, could you put an extra lock on the door? We showed them where they were. We showed them. Unlike being under a Corvette in a little garage with the door open all the time, <laughs> we had these things locked. We were surrounded all the time by many Secret Service agents. We had Secret Service all over Mar-a-Lago. You couldn't take anything out. But what happened, and, and when you take a look, Biden didn't have the Presidential Records Act. He's at great jeopardy, really. So the but they, attorney for former process. President Trump, Alina, good to have you with us. Uh, first, your reaction to the attorney general there. Decision. I've never seen such support. I'm glad you asked, Martha. Uh, uh, nobody is above the law. I would just like these left winging DAs and AGs to show us that. Show us that. I'm inviting you to show me that no one is above the law while we have Hunter Biden, Joe Biden, and all of his friends up in D.C. in the deep state that have not been touched. Show me no one is above the law, Martha, because I'm not seeing it. Do you know what I'm seeing in court in these cases is that everyone is above the law if they're friends with Miss James, if they're friends with D.A. Bragg, and if they're friends with Fannie Willis and Jack Smith. The only person that is not, the only person who did nothing wrong but will still get persecuted and prosecuted is President Trump because they can't beat him in November. So I want to use their words against them and invite them to show me how no one is actually actually above the law, because there are, there are people that we know have broken laws, and we have not seen the system of justice be used the same for them as they are for President Trump. President Trump did nothing wrong. I'm He's being persecuted. Show me the people that did real crime get oh persecuted well, and prosecuted. Some, so, I want to see that. So, some of those people uh, are, are back on the street in about five hours, um, and, and a lot of you would like Trump to see those people um, oh, who no. are not rich or powerful, um, but who have some power in this city in terms of how safe people feel or don't feel. Let me ask you this. In terms of the 30-day deadline from Judge Angeron to pay this extraordinary fine that, jo that uh, Jonathan Turley calls obscene, um, is yeah. that the case? Does he really have 30 days to pay this fine? And if so, there are some reports that he will sell off almost all, if not all, of his New York assets. What can you tell us about that? No, I mean, I would never get into anything privileged, but I can tell you what the rules are. And within 30 days, even if we choose to appeal this, which we will, we have to post the bond, which is the full amount and some. Um, and uh, we will be prepared to do that. So, is, but how much is the bond? Well, it so it's you're, you have to break it up. So there were obviously individual defendants that got fined. There was the company that got fined. But you're looking at roughly, let's call it close to four hundred million dollars for something that he did nothing wrong. Look. It's no coincidence, and I'll say it, they know by looking at his statements of financial condition that this guy is worth a lot of money, billions and billions of billions of dollars. And that didn't even include his brand, Martha. But what they're trying to do between this case, between my last case, is put him out of business. It's not going to work, number one. Number two, what they're doing is a scare tactic. Unfortunately, they picked the wrong guy to pick on, in my opinion, because he's strong, he's resilient, and he happens to have a lot of cash. Now, that doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean it's okay. It's grotesquely insane. Uh, I was speaking to somebody today that actually mentioned that there are countries that literally make that in a given year in certain industries, countries in this world, but they would find somebody for what they call understating their statement of financial condition and making Deutsche Bank and Zurich, who, by the way, they still work with money, but they're going to find him that kind of thing. It, it's absolutely insane. No, there will be no mayhem for the Trump organization, unfortunately. I know that probably was Miss James's goal and, and Judge Ngoran, but that is not going to be the case. Well, uh, as I said, Jonathan Turley called it obscene. Other people have, said, people have said that it's a dangerous verdict in the precedent that it sets um, and what kind of damage it could do to New York City when other companies uh, will want nothing to do with that kind of um, politics and judgment. So we'll see where it goes. Alina, thank you very yeah. much. Always good to see you. Thank you. Alina Haba good to see you. joining us this afternoon. And Hands up. I have tried and failed. I'm serious. Uh, I failed. F-A-I-L. I have tried my best to... I don't know. 
understand what it is that Fox are attempting to do. In North Korea, Russia, China, the rule of law is perverted and it's weaponized against inconvenient forces. Everyone knows the game. Security forces, government lawyers, judges, they're not independent. They're all political hatchet men for the Communist Party. And since 2015, when Trump announced his run for the presidency, official forces in Washington have been unleashed on him. Have a debate. Let's have a debate in Eagle Pass, Texas, hmm. and solve for the American people the one thing we all can see with our own eyes. The left want an open, insecure border. The conservatives and common sense independents, we want a secure America, which means you have to control your back door, and then let's move it. Yeah, so I, I'll say without any questions, so sometimes you wake up on, on Monday morning and you realize that the race is already gone. The best thing you can do is within 24 hours is to get out the way. I hope that happens. Listen, Nikki Haley has run the best race she could run. And lately, her campaign has been descending, honestly. It, it's desperation that you feel coming from her camp. And when you feel that type of desperation, that means the race is already over. And the lead, leading person, Nikki Haley herself, has to come to realization. She has to realize that this race is over. It is best for the country, not just a party. It is best for America that we focus on Speaking Joe Biden. Speaking out the way he and did about Navalny shows you that he is a person without values. He looks like he's going to be a person without dollars either. But the values are what concern us. So then his pal in the United States Donald Trump, and you wonder what does Putin have on Donald Trump that he always has to be beholden to him, his mm -hmm. buddy, his buddy in vileness. And if, if, I don't know if you're going to show the American people the statement that he made, but it's beneath the dignity of a human being. It is so horrible. You think, no, somebody must have made this up. Not even Donald Trump could go this far. As I've said, he's in a limbo comp competition with himself. How far can he go? Well, now he's gone below sea level, below ground level. And this, this uh, statement should disqualify him from running for anything, much less president of the United States. I, I mean... Monday, Feb 19, 2024. Happy president. Oh. I thought the best way that we could perhaps uh, commemorate this day is by taking some presidents from movies. Really, really big movies. All I'm asking you to do is name the president and name the movie. If you really want to go for it, you can name the actor as well. Uh, just to make it a little bit more fun this Monday, we've put some AI images over the speeches. So, movie, president, and... Good morning. Good morning. In less than an hour, aircraft from here will join others from around the world. And you will be launching the largest aerial battle in the history of mankind. Mankind, that word should have new meaning for all of us today. We can't be consumed by our petty differences anymore. We will be united in our common interest. Perhaps it's fate that today is the 4th of July, and you will once again be fighting for our freedom. Not from tyranny, oppression, or persecution, but from annihilation. We're fighting for our right to live, to exist. And should we win the day, the 4th of July will no longer be known as an American holiday. But as the day when the world declared in one voice, we will not go quietly into the night. We will not vanish without a fight. We're going to live on. We're going to survive. Today, we celebrate. The last couple of months, Senator Rumson has suggested that being president of this country was to a certain extent about character. And although I've not been willing to engage in his attacks on me, I've been here three years and three days. And I can tell you without hesitation, being president of this country is entirely about character. For the record, yes, I am a card-carrying member of the ACLU, but the more important question is, why aren't you, Bob? Now, this is an organization whose sole purpose is to defend the Bill of Rights, so it naturally begs the question, why would a senator, his party's most powerful spokesman and a candidate for president, choose to reject upholding the Constitution? Now, if you can answer that question, folks, then you're smarter than I am, because I didn't understand it until a few hours ago. 
America isn't easy. America is advanced citizenship. You've got to want it bad, because it's going to put up a fight. It's going to say, you want free speech? Let's see you acknowledge a man whose words make your blood boil, who's standing center stage and advocating at the top of his lungs that which you would spend a lifetime opposing at the top of yours. You want to claim this land is a land of the free? Then the symbol of your country cannot just be a flag. The symbol also has to be one of its citizens exercising his right to burn that flag in protest. Now show me that. Defend that. Celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can stand up and sing about the land of the free. I've known Bob Rumson for years, and I've been operating under the assumption that the reason Bob devotes so much time and energy to shouting at the rain was that he simply didn't get it. Well, I was wrong. Bob's problem isn't that he doesn't get it. Bob's problem is that he can't sell it. We have serious problems to solve, and we need serious people to solve them. And whatever your particular problem is, I promise you, Bob Rumson is not the least bit interested in solving it. He is interested in two things, and two things only, making you afraid of it, and telling you who's to blame for it. That, ladies and gentlemen, is how you win elections. They need a decision, Mr. President. These past few hours have been the longest, darkest of my life. How does one weigh human life? One million civilians against 81 hostages. And in the middle, Frank Hummel. That we have ignored, abandoned, or marginalized a great soldier like Frank Hummel. And that American boys have paid for that neglect and blood is equally real and equally tragic. We are at war with terror. Fighting war means casualties. This is the worst call I've ever had to make. Airstrike approved. My fellow Americans, this will be the last time I address you. As you know, catastrophe has struck our nation, has struck the world. I wish I could tell you we could prevent the coming destruction. We cannot. Today, none of us are strangers. Today, we are one family, stepping into the darkness together. We are a nation of many religions, but I believe these words reflect the spirit of all our faiths. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall... I address you tonight, not as the President of the United States not as the leader of a country, but as a citizen of humanity. We are faced with the very gravest of challenges. The Bible calls this day Armageddon, the end of all things. And yet, for the first time in the history of the planet, a species has the technology to prevent its own extinction. All of you praying with us need to know that everything that can be done to prevent this disaster is being called into service. How are we doing so far? We're currently going through famous movie presidents. All right? We've used images from the new chat GPT module uh, where you type in what you want to see and it comes up with some fascinating scenery. In less than an hour. How are we doing with naming the aircraft for me? I forgot that I was hired to do a job for you and that was just a temp job at that. I forgot that I had 250 million people who were paying me to make their lives a little bit better. Now, I understand everyone's emotional right now, but listen up. I got a three-point plan to fix everything. There's evil in the world. There'll always be, and we can't do anything about that. But there's violence in our schools. Too much mayhem in our culture, and we can do something about that. Now, if your child's school has old ass books and brand new metal detectors. Let me hear you say, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. We will never negotiate. We will no longer tolerate and we will no longer be afraid. I present this in the hope that our great nations may learn to live in peace. Don't you agree with that? Yes, everyone's nodding in agreement. and. Uh, um, 
And this is very nice. Now show me that. Defend that. Celebrate that in your classrooms. Then you can stand up and sing about the land of the free. Cities fall, but they are rebuilt. This last clip, by the way, is not a presidential person. It is a political person. It's a news anchor and uh, named a TV show. We just think it is a great political moment captured, um, cliche alert, by the small screen. You know why people don't like liberals? Because they lose. If liberals are so fucking smart, how come they lose so goddamn always? Hey. And with a straight face, you're going to tell students that America is so star-spangled awesome that we're the only ones in the world who have freedom? Canada has freedom. Japan has freedom. The UK, France, Italy, Germany, Spain, Australia, Belgium has freedom. So 207 sovereign states in the world, like 180 of them have freedom. All right. And yet you, uh, sorority girl, just in case you accidentally wander into a voting booth one day, there's some things you should know. And one of them is there is absolutely no evidence to support the statement that we're the greatest country in the world. We're seventh in literacy, 27th in math, 22nd in science, 49th in life expectancy, 178th in infant mortality, third in median household income, number four in labor force, and number four in exports. We lead the world in only three categories. Number of incarcerated citizens per capita, number of adults who believe angels are real, and defense spending, where we spend more than the next 26 countries combined, 25 of whom are allies. Now, none of this is the fault of a 20-year-old college student, but you nonetheless are, without a doubt, a member of the worst period, generation period ever, period. So when you ask what makes us the greatest country in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yosemite? Sure used to be. We stood up for what was right. We fought for moral reasons. We passed laws, struck down laws for moral reasons. We waged wars on poverty, not poor people. We sacrificed, we cared about our neighbors. We put our money where our mouths were and we never beat our chest. We built great big things, made ungodly technological advances, explored the universe, cured diseases, and we cultivated the world's greatest artists and the world's greatest economy. We reached for the stars, acted like men. We aspired to intelligence. We didn't belittle it. It didn't make us feel inferior. We didn't identify ourselves by who we voted for in the last election, and we didn't, we didn't scare so easy. We were able to be all these things and do all these things because we were informed by great men, men who were revered. First step in solving any problem is recognizing there is one. America is not the greatest country in the world anymore. Enough?